Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. And today we are talking briefly about trading options. And we're going to trade options on Fidelity. Okay. And what we're going to do here is actually sell a covered call. So I'm going to show you how to sell a covered call against Microsoft. And what you'll see is I just typed in the symbol for Microsoft, which is MSFT. And that will automatically pull up the symbol. Now, what you'll see here is the bid and the ask price, the total volume for Microsoft, which was 21 million shares. And when we see this information, we can kind of look at this from the perspective of, do we want to actually buy this stock or do we want to perhaps sell a covered call while buying the stock at the same time? The other option would be we could sell what's called a cash secured put, which is a type of option. And you'll see we're going over to options right now for Microsoft. And what I want to try to do is look at some of these strike prices and see if there's anything that might actually fit within my investment goals and what I'm trying to achieve. So if you take a you know kind of blue chip tech stock like Microsoft and you have, um, let's say, we have uh, 10,000 shares. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but bear with me. I want to use an example of 10,000 shares just to illustrate what's possible. Because each options contract is going to be 100 shares of stock. So that's one rule of thumb if you can write this down, if you're brand new to options. 100 shares of stock will be equivalent to one options contract. Now with that being said, if we have 100 shares of Microsoft, that gives us the right to sell one options contract on the market. And what happens is when we sell the options contract, we actually... Um, collect what's called a premium. Now, the premium is going to be this money that we receive into our account for selling the option. And there's two types of options we can sell. The first one is when we buy a stock. So, for example, if I'm interested in buying Microsoft, you'll see that the price is $367.75. And I want to go ahead and um, buy 10,000 shares. But I'm going to do so by actually purchasing what's called, or by selling a cash-secured put. And so what I'm going to do is enter 100 contracts for a put that's going to expire. Right now is January 6th. I'm going to look at this from the expiration of, you know, earnings is coming up on January 25th. Let's do January 19th, right before earnings. And the strike price I'm looking at is going to be $365 per share. Now, what you'll see here is for a $365 strike price, let me zoom in. This is the strike price or the options price that we would actually have to buy the stock at if this went down to $365 per share. So if we choose this strike price, we're agreeing to get long 10,000 shares. Remember, 100 shares of an options contract is going to be, you know, you'll see the quantity there, 100. Um, so basically just multiply that and you get 10,000 shares. So with that being said, 100 contracts at a strike price of $365. We're agreeing to buy 10,000 shares of Microsoft at this price. And the benefit for selling this put option, um, for being willing to buy Microsoft stock up until the expiration day, which is January 19th. And look what I did. What I actually focused on in this situation was before earnings. Because I know earnings can get volatile. And do I really want to be a part of that? That's a question that I think a lot of people would ask themselves. But for me... I'm not going to risk the earnings on January 25th. I'm going to say January 19th, let's get out of the trade, collect the premium. Hopefully the stock has not moved too much in anticipation of earnings. And perhaps it's still above 365 by the time expiration rolls around. But if, you know, worst case, this is against the stock I'd want to own anyway, right? That's the goal when we're doing this is we're actually going to be buying this stock like we would be on the open market, but collecting a premium in the process. And this is what a lot of people don't know about. And you were actually buying this stock at a discount as well. Given the current market price of 367, the strike is 365. And so we're actually buying this at a discount. And so what we'll do here is actually put in a limit price of the current bid price for this, or the midpoint, is 345. So we could put anywhere from 340 to let's say 345. In this case, I want to try for 345 and hope that when this goes through on Monday morning, that we can actually get filled at this price. Um, so what I'm going to do is use my cash in the account. Let's just use that as, as an example. And we have the time and force, which is day. 
And we're actually, um, now it says this account has not been approved. I'm logged into the wrong account on this actually. So I'd have to be in my Roth IRA. That'd probably erase everything. The point is we can do the math on this and how much money you would actually generate from this. And so um, if we go to the profit and loss calculator, it might actually show us um, how much we would win and, and potentially lose off this. Um, let's see here. So profit and loss. Um, I'm probably not going to mess with that, to be honest. But let's take a look and actually calculate it manually. So we have a limit price of $345. we are trying to get filled. That's $345 per options contract. Now, keep in mind, like I said, 100 shares per options contract. So multiply by 100, $345 per options contract. And we're selling how many of them for 10,000 shares is going to be 100 contracts at $345 per share. Now, you can see, just based upon this, that we're generating $34,500. And that's not including commissions that Fidelity would charge or anything like that. But just as an example on selling Microsoft. Now to own 10,000 shares of this stock, keep in mind, the stock price is trading at $367 per share. So to own 10,000 shares of Microsoft is a pretty good amount. But let's say you got in early and you, you, know, you had the uh, dividends and whatnot you reinvested. Um, we're looking at basically a $3.6 million position to generate $35,000 in passive income, um, roughly. You know, if you think about that from the perspective of $35,000 a month, let's assume times 12 for every single month we do this. Uh, we're just bankrolling this every month divided by, let's say, a $3.6 million portfolio. And what we have here is basically an 11.6% dividend yield. And this is not uncommon. These types of yields are possible when we're looking at cash secured puts, covered calls, and this type of strategy. So with that being said, what we're going to do is pretend that Microsoft actually fell under 365. And let's say now we're going to do a covered call. We actually just got long the stock because we got put the stock since the stock finished below 365 on the expiration day. Remember, if the stock finishes below 365 on expiration day, we will be assigned 10,000 shares of Microsoft. What that means is basically we are going to own Microsoft in its full position. And what we need to do now is try to hedge our position and generate more cash flow with what's called a covered call. Now, a covered call is going to be just the opposite of a cash secured put. Instead of buying the stock, this is going to be for our exit or the selling of the stock. And so when we're thinking about selling a stock at a certain strike price, same thing, um, we're actually going to be selling the stock at an agreed upon price. In this case, let's just go out a little bit and assume that the stock's fluctuating around these levels, but we already got long the stock. And we're going to assume that we're going to sell a strike at 370. Now you'll see here that the bid price and the midpoint for this right here is about $4 or $4.07. And I'm going to try to get actually $4.05. I'm going to try to put it kind of in the middle and see if I can sneak in there and get a fill um, come Monday morning. And so what I'm going to do is multiply that by 100. Uh, so if we're going to go for $4.05, since there's 100 shares per options contract, we can take that times $405 uh, dollars per options contract. And then, of course, take by 100 since we are actually going to be selling 100 covered call contracts now. And just as a hypothetical example, selling the 370 strike generates $40,000 in cash flow. Once again, on a $3.6 million portfolio, I mean, you can kind of look at it from, uh, let's just say, hypothetically, 13.5% in that regard. So it could be more, it could be less. Um, basically, what we're looking at, though, is a sizable amount of cash flow that can be very beneficial for anybody who's looking at retirement solutions. If you have a large portfolio, even a $500,000 portfolio, which I would still say is pretty large. I mean, most people don't have a $500,000 portfolio sitting around. Um, and I would say that's pretty good, especially if you're you know, 20, 30, 40 years old and, and you're younger. Um, now, if you're older, that's still you know can last you in retirement. But ask yourself, how are you going to generate cash flow and replace your income these strategies, and specifically the wheel strategy, which is a byproduct of both the covered call and the cash secured put strategy, can be amazing strategies for generating cash flow. And if there's any other dividends the stock generates within this time frame, you could potentially capture any kind of dividends Microsoft would end up paying 
um, throughout this time period. So generating, you know, if you have, let's say, 10 times less this portfolio size, not 3.6 million, but 360,000. So you're not generating 35,000 a month, which sounds ridiculous and would pr provide a very nice standard of living, let's just say that. Um, but, you know, if we're looking at this from the perspective of instead of 35,000 a month, 3,500 a month, you're still making over $100 a day and you're still using your portfolio if you have a six-figure stock market portfolio, which I think is a great goal for anybody out there, in my personal opinion, especially these days with inflation. Having a six-figure stock market portfolio is a great way to hedge inflation and to you know really um, build those assets up. And it's not nearly as hard as it used to be, especially with all the opportunities these days, such as the wheel strategy, which we're talking about right now. But nonetheless, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I just wanted to kind of briefly cover this. Once again, you know, what we're doing here is buying the stock at a strike price. Where we're going to sell a cash secured put at, let's say, 365. Microsoft is at 367. We're buying at a discount. If it doesn't go below 365 by the expiration day, then we simply don't buy the stock and we collect the premium no matter what happens. That's the last important consideration I'll leave you with. If the premium... Um, you know, that, that's always going to be ours no matter what, no matter what happens, basically. That's the most important point I can tell you. Now, for the covered call strategy, once we actually buy the stock, let's say this goes down to 360 upon expiration day, we're going to buy the 10,000 shares of Microsoft. And what we're going to do is then sell covered calls at, let's say, a strike of 367.50 or 370. That's going to be the price we agree to sell the stock at. And that's also going to cap our upside. So that in mind, the wheel strategy is a repeating pattern of selling covered calls and cash secured puts in reverse to generate as much cash flow as possible. With that being said, it works better on lower beta stocks, lower volatility stocks. So is Microsoft the lowest beta? To be honest, I have not checked their beta recently. I don't know exactly what it is right now. But the point is, if we look at stocks of the lower beta in general, you're going to get less premium because of the less you know, implied volatility with those stocks. But nonetheless, you're also going to be safer in the regard that you won't have to deal with high volatility, like a growth stock selling, you know, covered calls and the wheel strategy on that would not be as beneficial. So with that being said, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope everybody has a great rest of your evening. God bless. Um, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.